it's called a graduate certification. So uh, you have your your associates, right? Your associates, which is a two year. And then you have your bachelor's, which is a four year. And then you have your master's, which is typically another two to three years, depending on where you're at. And then you have your specialist. Which depending on what you're doing, it's between three and four years. And then your doctorate, which could be up to 12 years. So you're okay. getting the special? I'm getting one in there. Oh. Uh, so a grad, graduation certificate. It means I have a master's, but I'm getting one subject area of mathematics to allow me to teach at this level. Oh, so you can teach like Not master's, master's level? I can teach at the master's Right now I can teach at the associate level. This will allow me to teach at the bachelor level. Oh, cool. So I could teach the third and fourth year classes. So, but that's I'm going for this. But yeah, the, what's what's weird is in Missouri, I can go because I have a master's. I can go and get 18 hours in any subject. I could go get English, and I could teach English at the college level. Would you ever switch and teach college students? Um, I'm college? looking at retirement mm -hmm. and teaching one or two classes a semester just for extra income, okay. just for fun. Keep me active, not sitting at home, getting fat and burned and lazy. All right, very good. So, lecture 39. What? Professor Phillips. Professor no, Phillips. I'm not ever a professor. Dr. Phillips. I want you to become a professor so I can go with Professor Phillips. No. So, so Professor Martin. Okay, we got it. So, in order to be able to do inverses, we have to understand the identity property. Now the identity property is fairly easy to understand. We have four operations. We have add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Okay? So under addition, we have four plus what number equals four? Zero. Say again? Zero. Zero. The identity element, and I'm just going to put a capital I. If you want to do a capital I with a little E, to help you remember is the identity element is going to be zero because four plus zero is also zero. Now, here's an interesting thing with uh, with addition is even if I reverse it, if I switch them, zero plus four, that still equals four. Okay, so addition has identity on the left and on the right. Doesn't matter which way you put them. Okay, make sense? Left and right identity. Okay. What about subtraction? Four plus what number equals four? Now I just picked four out randomly. I can pick any number. Probably should have used a. A plus zero, but so four is just a random number. So what is it? Is it eight? Four plus what? That's not a negative. This is subtraction. That's subtraction. This is addition. That's not negative four, that's subtraction. Why is there a positive sign It's just four, oh, because I'm an idiot, that's why. Because I was so busy about not dealing with that. So, boom. So four minus what number equals four? Okay, identity element equals zero. Does subtraction have identity on both the left and the right? Why not? Because zero minus four does not equal four. So ident a subtraction only has identity on the left side. All right. Wait, so subtraction is only on the left side? Or? It's left. Because you have the number on the left, identity to the right side. Okay. Or you could just call it, you just call it one sided. One sided. Okay. So then, what about multiplication? Both sides. Both sides. So, but there's a different identity element, right? Mm -hmm. Four times what number equals four? Mm -hmm. So identity element equals one. And that same times four, it works both sides. And of course, you know where I'm going, right? Why aren't you sharing your Pringles with me? That's what I'm going to do. 
Do you have Pringles? We're going to go with division, right? So 4 divided by what number equals 4? Identity element equals 1 of division. Is it on both sides? No. No, it's only on one side, right? Because some number divided by 4 does not equal 4, therefore it doesn't have it on both sides, just one side. It's blank divided by 4 in that one? Blank divided by 4 equals it's 1. Is 1 divided by 4 equal 4? No. All right, so we got the idea of identity. Uh, and basically, what do I multiply, divide, add, subtract to get the exact same answer? So you kind of see where we're going with this. Okay. Kind of irritates me. Okay, so how does matrix identity work? So matrix identity. So if I take four negative two, what do I have there? Negative seven, I can't remember already. Negative seven five. I want to be able to multiply by something, or I guess, can I multiply by something? The answer is yes. That's going to be equal to the same exact value. Say it again. One. One. One, 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 one. One, 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 one. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's see if that's going to work. One, 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 okay? I wouldn't write that down in my notes yet because it's not true, but you guys said it, so let's try it. Right? So to multiply these out, what is 4 times 1? Plus negative 2 times 1. Negative 2, that equals 2, that's not the same number. Four times one plus negative two times whatever values here. Is it the opposite value of each number? So instead of four, be negative four. Okay, so let's think about this. Some of this. I, I wasn't actually going to do this, but since you guys shouted out the answer, or what I thought was the answer, four times one is four, right? Mm -hmm. That's what that is. Yeah. So in order to add zero to it, Negative two times zero. Plus, he was right. He suggested he was like, "What if you did the one zero zero one?" Oh, very good. One zero, and that's the identity element. That's the identity element. One zero zero. So we've seen that before, right? Yeah. With the row echelon form, one zero zero one. Okay. So this. Okay. So the identity element is 1001. Zero, zero, one. Now, does it work on both sides? Yes. No. No. Only one way to find out, right? No. Seven, by the way, negative seven. Okay. We should get one zero zero one, right? So let's check it out. Or we should get itself, correct? So what's one times four? Four plus zero. That worked. One times negative two plus that works. Zero times four plus. Negative seven. Negative two plus zero plus five. So it does equal the same. And it doesn't matter which side. Say it again. Oh, no, I'm just 
doesn't matter which side you multiply it on, the inverse on, you will always get that it doesn't matter which side has left and right. Oh, that's what you meant when it has the both sides. I did it on both sides. It doesn't matter which way you multiply it, you will still get the same. Division and subtraction are not like that. Say The division and subtraction are not like that. Correct. Uh, just basic numbers, uh, sets of real numbers. In matrices, we only deal with multiplying. Because adding a subtraction are obviously the same. Okay, um, let's see here. Let's see where we're going next. Okay, so we've established that we have. It does have a deter uh, an identity. We know what the identity element is. And what was the topic of this unit? Yeah, we haven't talked about inverses yet. So let's talk about inverses. Let's talk about inverses. So how do you find an inverse? So one of the things I'm going to ask you to do is to find the inverse. I mean, if it asks you, is this an inverse, multiply them together, you get 1, 0, 0, 1, you know it's an inverse. But I've asked you to find the inverse, okay? Let's go back to multiplication. What was the, um, the identity of 4? 4 times 1 is 4. Oh, I know what I was going on. So, um, sorry, I gotta make that bigger. This is what I lost where I was going. Okay, so let's start back with addition. Four plus zero equals four, right? Therefore, the inverse of 4, and we're talking about the additive inverse of 4, is what? Zero. 4 plus what number equals, what number gets me back to 0? What number gets me to the zero. negative 4, right? The additive inverse is just the negative. The additive inverse of 4 is negative 4. So if I had a plus what number equals a, what would be the additive inverse? Negative a. Because a plus negative a equals my identity. What about multiplication? Let's go back to, let's use A. A times what number equals A? One. One, so my identity element is one. So what is the multiplicative inverse? In other words, A times what value equals its identity of one? A times A is A squared. A times what is one? A times one. Say it again. A times one. Uh, no, a times 1 is a. So a times what is 1? What is its multiplicative inverse? And that's the key we're looking for. What is its multiplicative inverse? Oh, what was it? 1 over a. 1 over a. So if I have 7, 7 times what number it takes me back to its identity? 1 over 7. 1 over 7. So that brings us, how does that happen? We got purple next. Okay. So that takes us back to an inverse of a matrix. Okay. What I want to do is I want to take, let's, let's let A equal a matrix. Let's let A equal some matrix times its inverse matrix is going to be equal to its identity. So A times whatever its inverse is equals its identity. Okay. Now I can go back to my notes. Can I work?
All right, so let's start off with naming one. Let's start off with, here's how we find it. This is where you want to start taking notes for homework. For the line, this is where homework's going to start. So let's say we have A, uh, I'm going to make one that I know the matrix works out nice. A is going to be 2, 1, 5, 3. 2, 1, 5, 3. Now, it's inverse we don't know, correct? Mm -hmm. We don't know what the inverse is. So in algebra, what do we always do when I don't know what something is? We put in a formula. Letter. Very well. So do you care what letters we use? Say it again. A, B, C. It's kind of boring, but that's okay. A, B, C. Now, we just said, if I take A, oops, if I take A times its inverse, what am I going to get? Which is? No. I'll say identity of a 2 by 2 matrix. One, zero, zero. We know it's going to equal 1, 0, 0, 1. We know it's what's going to be equal to. Okay? You might want to put those reasons away. Here we go. Uh, so, let's take 2, 1, 5, 3 times A, B, C, and D. And that's going to be equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. All right? So how do I multiply? We go 2 times A, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be 2A plus 1C. And that's my element number 1. What's my second one going to be? I'm going to take row 1 times column 2. So 2 times B plus 1D. Okay? You do the bottom row. Bottom row times row 1, bottom row times row 2. All right, so what's my bottom row? 5A, 5C, 5A, plus 3C, thank you, and 5D, 3D, 3D, plus 3D. Now remember, that equals 1, 0, 0, 1, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go to a new slide. It's one thing I don't like about this board is I can't just slide things up. So I have, read it to me real quick. 2A plus 1C, 2B plus 1D, 5A, 5A plus 3C, 5B plus 3C. And that's going to equal 1, 0, 0, 1. Let's go back to addition, subtraction of matrices. If these two matrices are going to be equal, then we know that this element has to be equal to what? One. So I know that 2A plus 1C has to be equal to 1. And what do I know about this element here? 5A plus 3C has to be equal to what? Zero. Zero. And now I have a system of two equations, two unknowns. I don't care how you solve it. You can use 
Gaussian elimination, you can use the determinant. This one to me is pretty easy by elimination because these two are pretty close, right? So if I just take the top one and multiply it by three, I get 6a plus 3c equals three. And then use elimination. Am I going to add or subtract those two equations? Subtract. Subtract. So 5a minus 6a is negative 1a. 3c and 3c cancel. 0 minus 3 equals negative 6 3. 6a minus 5 So a is going to be equal to 3. How so do we use the points? We're subtracting it from... Write this down here. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. It goes below it? That's just the way I wrote it. Yeah. Yes? How would we use the determinant? How would you use the determinant? Alright. Be patient. So you know the determinant. I'm sorry, hang on. You know that little letter A is going to equal the determinant of A divided by the determinant. So your determinant is going to be 2, 5, 1, 3. What do you do on top with the determinant of A? So instead of 2, 5, you're going to put... Remember, I'm looking for A, right? That's where you put 1, 0, 1, 3, and then you stop. Just like we did yesterday. Either way works. What do we have? A those what? Three. So we have three minus zero over six minus five it does give me three over one, which is so A equals three. Um, Either way. Now, mathematically, what's the quickest and easiest way to find C? Plug it in. Plug it in. So I have if A is three, then six plus C equals one. So what is C going to be equal to? So I've got my inverse. We know A is going to be 3. C is going to be negative 5. Do the same. Say it again. Do the same thing. Do the same thing. 2B plus 1D equals 0. 5B plus 3D equals 1. Go ahead and solve for B and D. For the However method you want. Because some of them will work one way, but they won't work the other. So to check to see, and I don't know how many times I ask these, but most of them I just say find the universe. This is one way to find the universe. This is a long way. As soon as we get this inverse, I'll show you how to show you.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
The second thing is this isn't always one. Remember, our determinants can be anything. 27, negative 45, 116. They can be anything, any, any possibility. So whatever my fraction is here, I do have to multiply it out. To okay, multiply. so we have to multiply that. Scale. The reason I didn't hear is it's just one. But here's my question, though, class. What if my determinant equals zero? It's not. Can I do one divided by zero? No. It's going to be a problem. Okay, so if our determinant equals zero, we, we have a bit of a problem. And for right now, hopefully we don't have any. If, if it happens, no solution to move on. But, um, or no inverse, sorry. But uh, uh, that is going to be an issue later on in, in your math career. Okay, if that determinant equals zero. Okay. So, try this one. I don't care which method you use, although I have a feeling I know which one you're going to use. Okay, uh, I'm going to make this one up. So I do not know if it works out nicely. This may be an ugly fraction. I don't know and I don't care. You guys are college algebra pre -calc kids. You can handle anything I give you. Okay. Find its inverse. Congratulations, it is a very large fraction. Is it a large fraction? It is. Oh, okay. Should be ugly. Should be ugly? I don't know. Could be. I don't know we have to report. Of course, you need to pull up the calculator and I set over it. So basically, it just makes all those numbers over 43. Yeah. Two. Hey, what decimal place do we round to? Don't do decimals, do just fractions. Oh, I don't know how to multiply a fraction by all yes. just do a fraction. I just auto go to decimals in my head. Are we at the point where we're multiplying out a scalar? Are we at that point yet? What's my determinant? 33. 35 minus the negative 8. So 1 over 43. Oh, I read that as 11. Times. Times. What's my new matrix look like? 7, 2. So I just simply switch the 5 and 7, change the signs of those two. To multiply it, all that means is the denominator becomes 43. Yeah. So it's going to be 7 40 thirds, 2 40 thirds, negative 4, and there's none of them that will be able to be simplified. It's 43 prime. 43 is prime, so there's your answer. Yeah. So we just leave it as fractions. Don't change it. Oh, okay. 